Okay, I am back for the second part of the HP 3115M R, otherwise known as the HP DM1Z overview. Um, as I described in the last video, the second part is going to detail maintenance on this system, as well as how to open it up and exchange components. Now, what you all, only things you really have to do with this one, this is actually a very simple notebook to maintain and upgrade. Just uh, flip it over, and you'll see the battery latch on the back. Slide the battery latch to the side, and it will automatically pop up a little bit to remove. And just a second, so I can... Something to cover. There we go. Need something to cover the COA on my notebook. Anyway, now all you have to do is uh, next push this to the side and you'll kind of hear a little bit of a pop all the way to the right. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, but you can push it down and the cover comes right off. Set very simple, no screws, no anything to get to this point. I'll set everything aside. Now you've got the internals of the notebook sitting right here. You have your hard drive sitting right here. And all you have to do to remove it is uh, pull open this little plastic flap. Take this screw out. Lift up the entire hard drive caddy. And then remove the SATA connector. Please keep in mind I'm doing this through the viewfinder of my iPod touch here so it's a little iffy and just pull off this uh, little SATA connector and there you go secondly you have your RAM right here you have two dim slots uh, like I said in the last video this uh, shipped with two gigabytes of RAM um, two one gig sticks I pulled those out and swapped them for to two gig sticks, so I have four. This will take up to eight gigabytes, though, which is a nice, uh, nice little feature. Okay, then we move on to the fan. Now, as a word of caution, uh, this is easy to get out, not so easy to get back in. Basically, they wanted you to. Tear apart the entire notebook just to get at the fan. Um, so this is kind of in a little bit sideways and maybe stripped out a little bit. Um, I just kind of keep it there to hold the fan together. So it is a little bit of a kludge. Uh, the other screw is right here, easy to get to. All you have to do is take those two out and the fan comes right up. I have to kind of wiggle a little, little bit, and so you can get out the fan for cleaning out any dust or hair that gets into it, as well as lubricating it. Uh, if you, if there is enough of an interest, I will actually do a video on how to lubricate laptop and desktop fans, if uh, that would be of any interest or help to anybody. That actually uh, improves fan performance a bit. Um, will also possibly help a dying fan out, which is you know really nice. Uh, one of my friends had a dead fan on uh, his desktop, and we follow, uh, we did the procedure, and it worked just fine. You know, it worked just fine afterwards. He was quite amazed. So if you have a noisy fan or a dying fan, that's one thing. That's a cheap fix to try before having to go out and buy another one. Uh, right here you have the heat sink for the APU. Uh, there's those four little screws to get this out. Uh, keep in mind that if you do this, you are definitely voiding your warranty on your system. But, uh, actually I think this is still under warranty, but, uh, shh, don't tell HP. Uh, no, I'm just kidding, you know, I wouldn't, you know, if a problem comes with, uh, with one of my systems, I'm going to fix it myself. That That's just the way I am. But there you go. Four, uh, four screws and pull that up and you can get to the processor core to repaste it. Um, on this side, you have your CMOS battery right here. 
So it's nice to see that you've got one that's easily removable. Um, symptom of this failing is if your notebook does not keep time when it's turned off. Because uh, this just supplies a little bit of current to your motherboard to make sure that it keeps, you know, bio settings, date, time, any sort of bio settings that you've uh, customized, whatever. They, it make sure to keep to make sure to keep that active. So if this battery is dead or removed, it just won't hold anything. You'll get a little message going, check date, time, whatever. And right here you have your wireless card, which is, I believe, a RA-Link combination Bluetooth and wireless N. So there you go. Also, and a bit of a departure from most standard notebooks, uh, this little tab right here is actually to the SATA cable right here. So this is actually like a detachable cable. So if you're if you're replacing your hard drive, obviously don't lose this. If you need to replace the keyboard, and I actually had to replace the keyboard right here, I will go ahead and post, post put this up here. Uh, you'll see that uh, there are three screws. One, two, and three. And this is actually at the top of the keyboard right here. So, sorry. Oops, that fell off my desk. Anyway, um, in order to get to those, uh, you have one easily visible screw hole right here. And the others are going to be under these little cover plates. What you need to do is get like a small flathead screwdriver or something and pry these little rubber feet up. And there are screws underneath or you can just take it out and remove it. And those are where the other keyboard screws are. When you're done with that, the keyboard will automatically lift up and you take out the ribbon cables and everything like that like you need to and replace your keyboard if you have if you have to. So that's pretty much it for the internals of this notebook. Uh, I, If anyone else is interested, I can do another video. Uh, I am going to take this hard drive out and replace it with an SSD here pretty quickly. So whenever I get around to getting an SSD free. Uh, long story, I'm not going to bore you guys with that until a little bit later. So, that's about it for this video. Uh, part 3 is actually going to be where I turn the notebook actually on and give an analysis as to its performance and everything. So, go ahead and stay tuned. I will be right back.